everyone, it's Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com and in this video I'm going to be going over hyperthyroidism. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be giving you an NCLEX review and go over the signs and symptoms, the causes, the nursing interventions, the patho, and the pharmacological aspects of dealing with this disorder. In the next video, I'm going to be covering hypothyroidism. So be sure to check that out so you can see the differences between these two conditions. Now, after you watch this video, go to my website, registerednursrn.com, and take the free quiz to test your knowledge on hypo versus hyperthyroidism. And a card should be popping up so you can access that quiz. So let's get started. First, let's start out by defining what hyperthyroidism is. What is it? It is a high secretion of thyroid hormones. So the body is pumping out a lot of thyroid hormones, which wreaks a lot of havoc on your body. How is it diagnosed? It is diagnosed with a blood test of physician orders to check your T3, T4, or TSH levels, the thyroid stimulating hormone level. Now let's go into the pathophysiology. The patho, if you can understand what's normally going on in the body, you will understand why you're seeing these signs and symptoms and these causes in these patients. So let's go over this. Okay, first let's go over the anatomy of the thyroid gland. Okay, your thyroid gland sits below your larynx, your voice box. In the men, they have the Adam's apple, the laryngeal prominence, it'll be right below the, that. And it's butterfly shaped. And in the thyroid gland, you have the parathyroid. Anytime the thyroid gland is manipulated, like in surgery or anything like that, you always got to watch out for parathyroid problems. Your parathyroid regulates calcium. So you always want to watch and monitor their calcium levels, especially with like a thyroidectomy, which we'll go over a little bit later. And your thyroid gland produces thyroid hormones through the negative feedback loop, which we'll go over a little bit later. And these thyroid hormones play a huge role in how your body works, um, how your body metabolizes, regulates its temperature, and growth and development, especially in your pediatric children. They need to have good thyroid levels um, for brain development. These hormones are known as T3 and T4 also produces calcitonin, but we're really interested in the T3 and T4. T3 in hyperthyroidism is really going to be elevated, the thyroxin, and T4 can also be elevated as well. Important part, I would remember this, the thyroid cannot make thyroid hormones, T3 and T4, without iodine. So the person has to consume enough foods with iodine. Foods high in iodine are like your seafoods, like seaweed, eggs, dairy, things like that. So you have to make sure they're getting enough of it. And if they get too much of it, they can go into hyperthyroidism. If they don't get enough iodine, they will get hypothyroidism. So very important. Okay, so what exactly does T3 and T4 do? What is its role? Okay, the function is, is that it helps you burn calories. So in hyperthyroidism, we're gonna be burning calories at an excessive rate, and so you're gonna see some weight loss. It also determines how fast new cells replace dying cells, how fast we digest food, um, stimulates the sympathetic nervous system, that's why alertness, we have responsiveness, and um, quick reflexes, Increases our body temperature, our heart rate, blood pressure. It's big in brain development and regulating the thyroid stimulating hormone known as TSH. What is TSH? It's a thyroid stimulating hormone and it is produced by the anterior pituitary gland. And whenever it is released, it stimulates the thyroid gland to release those thyroid hormones, T3 and T4. So let's look at that negative feedback loop because if you get anything messed up in this loop, it will mess up how your thyroid hormones are secreted. So you have the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus is responsible for releasing TRH, thyroid tropin releasing hormone. Whenever that is released, the anterior pituitary gland senses that and releases TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. Then whenever the thyroid senses that has been released, it will secrete our thyroid hormones, T3 and T4. And if there's any problems, like for instance, say the anterior, anterior pituitary gland had a tumor, it wouldn't be able to secrete TSH. So the thyroid just wouldn't release T3 or T4. So if it's not gonna release T3, T4, T3 or T4, you're gonna have hypothyroidism. Even though there's nothing wrong with the thyroid, there's something wrong with the anterior pituitary gland. 
and it can happen vice versa. So keep that in mind. Now let's look at our signs and symptoms. Whenever you're looking at the signs and symptoms, let the condition name help you. We're talking about hyperthyroidism. Hyper means high, elevated. So everything in the body is going to be working at an accelerated high rate. So let's look at the signs and symptoms. Okay, you're gonna have some weight loss going on. Why? We just went over the function of T3 and T4. T3, T4 helps you burn calories. So they're gonna have an excessive amount of this, so they're gonna be burning calories like crazy and they're gonna be losing weight. They're gonna have a heat intolerance. Literally, they just feel hot and sweaty. They cannot tolerate the heat. And this is because their body temperature is increased. Next, they're gonna have an increased heart rate, blood pressure. This is due to the sympathetic nervous system being in overdrive, your fight or flight response. They're just constantly in that. Having diarrhea, this is because your GI system is in overdrive, it's shooting through food through those intestines, and again, that will attribute to the weight loss because whenever you have food flying through the intestines, it's not giving it enough time to absorb nutrients, so that can lead to that. They're also gonna have smooth hair and soft skin. That's due to that increased blood flow. They're at risk for cardiac dysrhythmias, like atrial fibrillation, and personality changes because they are just really wired. They're gonna be moody, restless, irritable, and have problems sleeping at night, insomnia. So what causes hyperthyroidism? The most common cause is Graves' disease. And this is an autoimmune condition. The body is causing it on itself. And what's happening is that the body is producing an antibody slash immunoglobulin called TSI, thyroid stimulating immunoglobulin. And this acts like TSH, our thyroid stimulating hormone. So because we have this invader, TSI, working in the body, because the autoimmune response is causing it to secrete it, the TSA, the body looks at it as TSH. So whenever TSH is released, remember from the anterior pituitary gland, it causes the thyroid to release T3 and T4. So you're gonna have excessive amounts of this being released. And this tends to be genetic, runs in families, Graves' disease. Now with this, the patient will have unique symptoms. They'll have these symptoms that we talked about just a minute ago, but they'll also have, keep this in mind, commit this to memory, they will have protruding eyeballs. It's where the eyes are opened up really big. It's like a shocked look on the face and they just stay like that. Um, they can have a gorder in the neck, my myxedemia, uh, pretibial type. This is where you have a waxy orange peel appearance on the skin that is found on like the feet or legs. So they will have those types of symptoms. Okay, next let's look at the toxic nodular gorder known as TNG. This is also another cause. This is not autoimmune like Graves disease. So the body isn't causing it. What it's caused by are nodular growths um, like gorders on the neck that are independently working to hypersecrete the thyroid hormone. So you have these nodulars on the neck, you're gonna see the gorder, and they are secreting your T3 and T4 and causing lots of problems on the body. You will see the typical signs and symptoms that we talked about, but you will not see the eye changes, like the protruding eyeballs, like how you do in Graves' disease, so you do not have that. Another cause of hyperthyroidism is thyroid, Thyroiditis, this is inflammation of the thyroid gland. And what happens is that the thyroid gland becomes inflamed. And um, when it becomes inflamed, it causes it to release the thyroid hormones into the blood. So you'll have excessive production of that. And another cause is just consuming too much iodine. We talked about that earlier. Remember, what does iodine do? Thyroid loves iodine. When you take in a lot of iodine, you're gonna produce lots of thyroid hormones. So that can cause that as well. Um, treatment for these conditions, which we're fixing to go in depth here in a second, we're gonna go over the pharmacological aspects of it, the treatments, patient education. But treatments for these conditions are antithyroid um, medications, radioactive iodine, beta blockers, and thyroidectomy. So let's go over that. 
First, let's look at the nursing interventions. What are you gonna do for this patient as the nurse taking care of someone with hyperthyroidism? You want to keep them comfortable because remember, they are having issues with heat intolerance. They're very stimulated, they're restless. So you wanna keep the environment cool and quiet and administer sedatives if the doctors order them as needed to keep them calm and collective. You're gonna obtain weights. You wanna monitor their weight, make sure they're getting proper nutrition because they're burning calories so fast. You are monitor that heart rate, blood pressure, EKG for any changes, make sure their heart rate is not tacky or their blood pressure is too high. Educate the patient about medications they're gonna be taking or any possible treatments to treat this condition and you're gonna monitor them for thyroid storm. What is a thyroid storm? It is a life-threatening condition where there is maybe untreated hyperthyroidism or the patient's had a thyroidectomy, so they've had, they're getting way too much thyroid hormone, maybe the treatment's not helping, or they just had their thyroid gland removed, so they're definitely at risk for that. And how does this present? This presents with those exaggerated symptoms already of the hyperthyroidism. So instead of having just heat intolerance, they're gonna have a fever, a raging fever. They'll be very hot. They'll have very fast heart rate, hypertension, be really restless. So everything is going at an accelerated rate, but exaggerated. So let's look at the medication treatments. How are these treated, how is hyperthyroidism treated with medications? Okay, one type of medication are called antithyroid medications. What do they do? They stop the thyroid from synthesizing T3 and T4. So you're not going to be synthesizing all that thyroid hormone. And these medications don't damage the thyroid gland like radioactive iodine, which is a treatment we'll be talking about here in a second. And some medications that are popular that people use, one is called tapazole, also called methamazole, and this is the most common used treatment for Graves' disease, because mainly because it has fewer side effects. However, this medication cannot be used in the first trimester of pregnancy. So if you have a patient, a female who's pregnant in her first trimester, they're usually started on PTU, which is propothiouracil, and this is safe to use in the first trimester. However, studies have shown that there is an increased risk of liver failure with this medication, so you wanna watch those liver enzymes. Overall, other side effects that you can get from these antithyroid medications are agranulocytosis, where this is where you have a decreased white blood count so they can be at risk for infections, or aplastic anemia, meaning that those red blood cells are diminished. Now, some patient education that you want to remember when teaching your patient, great test questions on how to take these meds and things to watch out for. Okay, number one, educate the patient to never just stop taking these medications abruptly. A lot of times these medications take a while for the patient to start seeing symptoms relieve, so they think, hey, the medication's not working, I'm not gonna take it anymore. Let them know it takes a while. Take the medication at the same time every day. Monitor the, um, have the patient monitor themselves for thyroid storm, that can mean that they're, it's not being treated properly, they need more thyroid hormone than what they're getting, so they need to watch out for that extreme fever, rapid heartbeat, high blood pressure. Um, they also need to avoid foods rich in iodine because remember, iodine makes thyroid hormones. So they need to restrict what they're eating. Again, that's like your seafoods, like seaweed, eggs, um, dairy, things like that. And no aspirin. Aspirin actually increases thyroid hormones. So they want to avoid taking aspirin. And to watch out for toxicity symptoms, which would be hypothyroid signs and symptoms. So slow heart rate, um, feeling exhausted, tired, uh, hypothermia, things like that. So have the patient be aware of those. Now let's look at the treatments that a patient could have um, for this condition. One treatment is the radioactive iodine. How this works is a patient will take a capsule with iodine, the iodine will be radioactive, they'll swallow that pill, the iodine will go to the thyroid because the thyroid loves iodine, but this iodine special iodine. It's radioactive. So what it's going to do is it's going to destroy the thyroid gland over time. The thing with this is that it's a permanent cure. Compared to the, th to the antithyroid medications, it's not 
typically a permanent cure and it doesn't destroy the thyroid gland like this does. However, this is not for women who are pregnant or nursing because of the radioactive material. One thing that a patient can get from this is um, signs and symptoms of iodism, which is just taste changes where they can get like this metal taste in their mouth, nausea or swollen saliva glands. So watch out for that. Another treatment is thyroidectomy. This is where they just go and completely remove this thyroid gland altogether. However, there are some issues whenever this happens. You want to watch out for the thyroid storm. What happens is whenever they remove the thyroid gland, they manipulated it, some T3 and T4 could have leaked into the system during removal and it shot the levels up so the patient's going to experience hyperthyroidism. And so to help combat that, a lot of times they like to put them on antithyroid medications, sodium iodine solution, a beta blocker, and glucocorticoids. And beta blockers, let me just touch on this for a second. A lot of times patients with hyperthyroidism may be started on beta blockers like Enderol. Why? This helps the patient cope with some of the symptoms that they're getting, especially that fast heart rate, increased blood flow, the blood pressure, and the heat intolerance, because those beta blockers are gonna bring that heart rate down, bring that blood pressure down, which is hopefully going to make them feel more comfortable and bring that heat intolerance down. So that's one thing. And glucocorticoids also for the thyroidectomy, that's to suppress the immune system. Another thing you wanna watch out for the thyroidectomy, if you can't remember anything else about thyroidectomy, remember this. You can need to watch out for parathyroid gland problems. Remember, the parathyroid regulates calcium. So if you remove this gland, you're going to have possible issues with parathyroid where the calcium levels are going to drop to a really bad level and they might have hypocalcemia. So watch your calcium levels with that. Post-op, you want to make sure the patient's coughing and deep breathing, preventing pneumonia. And whenever um, they are coughing, that they are splinting the wound. They don't want to bust that wound open. Watch out for respiratory distress in these patients because the wound is going to be on their neck. They're definitely at risk for excessive swelling, bleeding, which can cause respiratory distress. So watch that. Make sure you have a trait kit, emergency trait kit at the bedside, oxygen or suction just in case you had to intervene. And the best position to keep these patients in who've had a thyroidectomy is semi-fowlers. So that is about hyperthyroidism. Now watch the next video on hypothyroidism. And don't forget to take that free quiz on my website, registernursrn.com. And thank you so much for watching. And please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel.